Hello YouTube vacuum enthusiasts. So as you can see, I finally have my Recar R40 Premium. This is technically the R40P.2 set up on my airflow box, ready to be tested. And I've been waiting quite a while to test this machine and I'm just getting around to it. So I'm very anxious to see the results. Um, but just a few things first, you can hopefully see the lighting is much better. I finally got two uh, light boxes off of Amazon uh, to provide some better light. And hopefully you're able to see the hold peak measurement a little bit better. I'll still zoom in on the final number so you can see that. Um, you can also see that the radiance is uh, flanked by two of my other Recar machines. I have my R10 Premium, the super light. And over here, I have the R25 Deluxe Edition. And what I'm kind of going for with this is the R40P uh, on the airflow box is kind of a combination of these two machines. Obviously, the Super Light over here is just a direct motor, sort of set up in an Auric style. Obviously, we know those get very good airflow. I should have some tests of that coming up. And then the R25D is set up where it's just a clean air motor. Obviously it has a brush roll motor, but there's no extra fan. It's just a single stage clean air motor. And so the Radiance in many ways is a uh, product of these two machines. So I'm interested to see where the measurements fall. I have seen some other people test them, but I'm interested to see where my tests will compare. So we're gonna do uh, some filter in, filter out, brush roll on, brush roll off, different sorts of tests just to get a wide range of measurements. But let's go ahead and get started. This will be clean air motor only and all filters and the bag in. So here we go. So as you can probably see, 85.9 CFM. And again, that's clean air motor only. And as you can see on the uh, current meter in the upper left-hand corner, this motor is only about seven and a half amps. So a pretty small clean air motor. You know, the uh, clean air motors traditionally are 12 amps, but obviously in this machine, with in combination with the direct air motor, it has to add up to 12 amps. So eight and a half amps. Um, but almost 86 CFM coming from the clean air motor is pretty impressive. That's pretty high for a clean air machine. Um, but obviously when we turn on the direct air motor, which activates the brush, but also that second fan, uh, we're expecting to see the numbers jump, but how much is what we're looking for. So here we go. This next test, again, with all filters and the bag in, will be both motors running.
so we're at 107.5 CFM. So that was definitely um, over a 20 CFM boost coming from the direct air motor when compared with just the clean air motor. So 107.5 CFM in the carpet setting, obviously, both motors running with all filters and the bag in. So for our next two measurements, we're gonna go ahead and take all of the filters and the bag out. Um, if I didn't mention already, I'm using a genuine Recar HEPA bag, which is totally clean, been used for nothing other than uh, airflow testing purposes. But let's go ahead and take all of our bags and filters out. All right, so everything is out of the machine there. You can see no filters. I had to fiddle a little bit with the bag door because they have it set up where it's not designed for you to be able to close it without a bag in it. So I just had to hold that lever down. But we're all ready to go. Let's go ahead and reset our anemometer. Get ready to do the next test. And this is going to be clean air motor only. Um, and again, no filters or bags are installed in the machine. So I do apologize, it's probably um, quite a bit louder than last time with no filters. Um, you'd be surprised how much sound deadening they actually provide. But 93.52, or about 93.5 CFM or so, um, is definitely a pretty good result. That's up about 8 CFM compared to with no bags or fill, or compared to the measurement with bags and filters installed. Um, and then we're going to go ahead, this will be the highest measurement that we'll get. We're going to go ahead and turn on the direct air motor and the clean air motor. Um, again, no filters or bag in and see what we can get. Starting off at 93.52, see how much that increases. Okay, so 113.5 CFM. So again, a decent increase compared to the measurement with the filters and bag in. Um, but contrary to what you might think, I'm actually gonna do one more measurement just to kind of show uh, the overall performance of this machine. Um, I'm gonna do it with just the direct air motor. Now, normally you wouldn't be able to run this machine with just the direct air motor. It's either clean air only or both motors, but I'm going to accomplish that by taking the bag door off. So obviously the clean air motor can't function without a seal from the bag door. So taking the bag door off is just going to be the direct air motor on its own. And let's see what numbers we can pull here. So taking the bag door off, which again, the clean air motor will still be on, but it won't be doing anything, providing any airflow to the nozzle. Okay. go and let's reset that anemometer again and away we go this will be direct air motor only no bags or filters so same as our previous measurement <laughs>
shows my point. We're up to almost 120 CFM, 119.7 as you can see there on the hold peak um, with just the direct air motor. So even if you just compare that to our last measurement, that really shows you that if anything, the clean air motor is limiting what the direct air motor can do. So this machine, you know, obviously the clean air motor allows this machine to have onboard tools, unlike any other direct air machine, um, but it does seem to actually be hindering the performance of that direct air motor. It just can't keep up. So almost 120 CFM from the direct air motor on its own, which is pretty impressive. So next we're gonna go ahead and do a nozzle suction test, and then we'll also have a brush roll speed test coming up. But next up, let's go ahead and do nozzle suction. So we're all set up for our nozzle suction test. You can see we've got the trusty Marshalltown suction gauge, and I did readjust my lights, so hopefully you'll be able to see it, but I will crop in uh, on the image as well as put the uh, measurement uh, on the screen as well once I can review the footage. But we're gonna do several different measurements to see what each of the motors are doing on their own, and then a combination measurement. So we're gonna go ahead and start uh, with just the clean air motor on. So I'm pretty sure I saw about 54, but again, I'll put that in live in the video, what the actual measurement was once I can review the footage. Uh, sorry about the glare from the lighting. I got to reposition it just a little bit so we don't get too much glare on the plastic uh, dial there. But next up, we're going to go ahead and do both motors together. See what we can do. I'm pretty sure I saw a 58 or a 59. Again, I'll have to check the footage. So a little bit of an increase, but obviously the clean air motor is providing the bulk of the suction since direct air motors are not that good in terms of suction. But for our final measurement, we're gonna go ahead and take our bag door off here, which again, as I said previously, uh, just means the direct air motor is the only one functioning. So the suction measurement probably will go down uh, pretty significantly, but let's see what the director motor can do on its own. sure that was exactly 20 inches of water lift so again not that impressive from the direct air motor so obviously as we expected the clean air motor is providing most of the suction but almost 60 inches of water lift from the nozzle is pretty impressive from this machine with both motors engaged but uh, so far the highest nozzle lift that I measured on any machine obviously my Kenmore Elite could probably get higher than that but I'll That'll be coming up soon, but still very impressive suction measurements for this. So I'm just going to interrupt the video real quick, but I just have a correction to the suction measurements. Um, it was pointed out to me, thank you Bill from VacLab to, uh, for pointing this out, that my suction gauge in this video was miscalibrated. It's about 8 inches of water lift too high, um, so all of the measurements I that you see on screen, I've subtracted the 8. Uh, inches of water lift from. So the ones you saw on screen are correct. I put them on this slide so you can see them again, um, but hopefully by the next video I'll be able to get the gauge calibrated so you'll be able to see it correctly. But just to clarify, these are the corrected measurements for suction. Now back to the video. So next up we're going to go ahead and do a brush roll speed test with my new tachometer. So the R40P 
is lying on its front now, ready for a brush roll speed test. But before we do that, I'm sure you want to see the ratings plate, so I'll give you a quick look at that. Let me zoom in here so you can see better. You can see it's the R40P.2, uh, 12 amps there, 120 volts. So there's that ratings plate right there. And as you can see, probably not very well, but we have our sticky piece of reflective tape right there, ready to be read by the tachometer. It was very hard uh, to get it to stick to the brush roll because I'm not sure if you've seen one of these brush rolls before, but it's got, here, we're climbing the machine there. It's got very strange shapes. It's got all these cutouts in it, which I'm not sure what the purpose of these are. It's a three row bristle brush roll, which is pretty rare, but very, uh, it's certainly not a flat surface. So I kind of had to push that on to get it to stick. And it's kind of difficult for the tachometer because this aluminum brush roll, kind of a brushed aluminum look, blends in very well um, with that piece of tape. But I have done some pre-testing to make sure that it works. So here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and tilt this machine up, but I can't put it all the way up into the locked position because that will deactivate the brush roll. There we go. So you should be able to see that. And away we go. See, the tachometer was kind of struggling there. Occasionally it would jump up to, you know, 23,000 or some astronomical measurement like that. Um, but I'm going to see if I can get reorientated here so I can just get a little bit more reliable of a measurement because some of those were just way too high. And I thought I saw about 5,500, but even then it was kind of bouncing around. So let me just try that again. And I'm going to put the camera more up above. You're gonna see my tripod there, but so that way I can hold this more at the correct angle and you can still see it. But here we go. <laughs> So that seemed to be a little more consistent, right around 55.30 is what I saw it peak at. So a pretty decent brush roll speed here. And again, I apologize for all the jumping around, but as you can see, um, that tape on there just blends in so well. I, it's even difficult for me to see it when the brush roll is spinning. So, but about 55.30 is what we'll put down for the brush roll speed. And for our final couple of measurements, we're just gonna do a uh, tool suction and tool airflow just to see what we're getting um, from the tools. Obviously that'll be clean air motor only. Okay, so first up we have suction at the hose. This obviously has the very stretchy, you know, 17 foot long hose on it here. So 
we're gonna make sure we keep it as straight as possible for those airflow tests, but for suction, obviously, we just need a good seal. So let's see. And I'm obviously gonna flip the dial to get our cool airflow. Obviously, it was hopping around quite a bit, but I'm pretty sure I saw an 84. Um, but obviously, you can see the uh, final number on screen there. But 84 inches from the hose is pretty good. And then we're going to also do an airflow test from the hose. So let me get set up for that. Okay, so I've got the old GM8901 out here. And I've got it hooked up to the hose. Now, you may be wondering... Is that a Kirby scalp massage tool? And you are correct. Um, but this just fits the detection vein for the GM8901 so perfectly. And you can see I've got it taped well there. So this uh, gets a nice good seal on the hose, which is perfect. Don't have to use some uh, a piece of cardstock or something like I would for the hold peak. So we're just going to put that on right there. You can see that they designed this... Uh, valve here to turn the tools on so the hose doesn't go in there correctly so there is a little bit of a, a little bit of a bulge there um th that's just designed so people don't accidentally leave this in tools mode when they're trying to clean for floors so we'll just make that as good as we can but we've got the uh anemometer all hooked up and let's see what we can get go ahead and set this on max and away we go So as you probably saw, 2893, um, that's about 75 and a half CFM from the hose uh, in tools uh, setup. So pretty decent performance. Obviously, the uh, air path going down to the floor is m uh, much more efficient than the tools because if you remember, the cleaner motor did, I think, about 85 or so um, on the floor because obviously it doesn't have to go... It just goes through this valve and down to the floor rather than up and around this circuitous path from the hose. So that's kind of interesting, but 75 and a half CFM from the hose. So now that we've got all of our measurements, let's go ahead and take an overview of all of the different measurements from this R40 Premium. Okay, so as you can see, we've got all of the measurements from the R Recar R40P.2 here. And I just want to draw your attention to the airflow measurements um, and how with the brush roll off and all filters in, that clean air motor on its own was able to get almost 86 CFM, drawing only about uh, 895 watts. So it's not a very big clean air motor, but it was able to do very well, which was surprising to me. Um, but obviously you can see the headline measurement of 107.5 CFM with both motors running and all filters in is obviously a, a decently impressive measurement. Um, I may have been expecting a little bit higher for a machine that has a direct air motor, um, but compared to what I've seen on YouTube, that measurement of 107.5 CFM is actually pretty good. And then another point about the brush roll off measurement is that keep in mind that clean air motor, when the direct air motor is off, it's having to pull air around that stationary fan. So that makes 86 CFM even more impressive from that clean air motor. Um, but obviously, you can see the measurements do go up um, by about, you know, 6 or so CFM with the filters out, which isn't actually a lot considering the huge number of filters um, and the high quality of the filtration that this machine has. And then the final measurement for airflow of the brush roll on and bag door off, which is what I was proving that the director motor on its own got almost 120 CFM. So... 
it kind of shows that the clean air motor, although it's very good, it got 86 CFM on its own, seems to be slowing down the performance of the direct air motor, which is interesting. And then moving over to the CFM density uh, category, you can see that the opening of the nozzle was about 22 and a half square inches, um, which yields almost a 5, a 4.78 um, on carpet mode, which is very high airflow density. I haven't actually noticed any difficulties pushing this machine even on thicker pile carpet, which is interesting. And it doesn't have a lot of relief holes on the nozzle. It has a few, um, but I'm not sure why it's so much easier. Like compared to the Sanitaire, which is impossible to push on any relatively thick carpet, this is much easier. Um, and then you can see the CFM d density peaked at around a 5.3 with just the direct air motor running. Um, but even with just the clean air motor, it's about a 3.82 or a 4.16 with the filters out. So even a 4 CFM density is pretty high, and that's just the clean air motor. So that's very impressive. And then looking at the watts per CFM, you can see pretty consistent measurements, but it's actually most efficient um, when the direct air motor is off, which I find interesting. You can see 10.42 watts per CFM with uh, brush roll off and all filters in, and 9.78 watts per CFM with the brush roll off and all filters out. So it seems like the direct air motor, although it increases the performance, it decreases the efficiency um, in terms of wattage used for this machine. And then the uh, measurements at the bottom, just to, I'll point out that the nozzle suction measurements and the hose suction measurement are all corrected. I subtracted 8 inches from those, as I mentioned earlier in the video, so those are the corrected numbers accounting for the miscalibration of my gauge. Um, but you know, 76 inches of lift from the hose is certainly very respectable, and 51 inches of lift from the nozzle is a very impressive measurement. So far, the highest I measured from any machine from the nozzle. And the, the hose airflow of 75.5 CFM, interesting as I pointed out in the video because it is significantly less than the 86 CFM that the clean air motor got on its own, so that definitely tells me that the air path going down to the nozzle is much less complex and circuitous than it is going to the hose, which one would expect. And then finally, you can see the brush roll speed of 5,530 RPM. It might go up a little bit from that when it was warmed up, but I did warm it up for about two minutes beforehand, and that's the measurement that it got. So that's a pretty impressive measurement. Um, slightly above what the Auric XL21, which is the last machine I tested, got on high. So that's pretty much it for this video. Um, as always, comment any critiques or suggestions below, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you get notified when I post a new video. And thank you very much for watching, and I will see you again in the next one.